the moment that I heard that Zack Snyder's Justice League was officially coming, I got really upset. And look, say what you want about Snyder Cut fans, because I know that people out there complain about how they're a toxic cult. Yet let me remind you all that every fan base, like sports and wrestling, not just the film genre, has a toxic fan base that only represents a minority compared to the majority that even helped raise so much money for suicide prevention. May God bless them. And the thing is, you know, they've been doing this for years and they never expected. I mean, they had hopes for a Snyder Cut, you know, but they never knew it was going to happen, but yet they continued to contribute. And look, I've never seen or heard of any other fan base that's generated so much positivity into a good cause for a film before. Maybe there are, but not that I'm really aware of. And uh, as of recent, I heard about those who were upset about the firing of Gene Carano raised a lot of money to prevent human trafficking. But look, I'm referring to a movement that has raised so much money for a good cause for so many years now and continues to do so. And even Henry Cavill explained it at best. When it comes to fans, it's a fan's right to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are going to be upset. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I consider that passion. Amen to that testimony. I 100% agree with that statement. And I've also never seen this kind of response to a trailer for a film before that has over 18 million views already on YouTube and a director who isn't very well respected. People have been shitting on Zack for a very long time now. I wouldn't say liked because Zack Snyder loves to interact with his fans and I think at this point he's already won them over. And he's also been praised by cast and crew members as a genuinely good person and hard to work for who is very passionate about his filmmaking. And when that new Justice League trailer came out, even those who opposed this film and director changed their tune. I was like, what the heck? I mean, I remember these people were just, you know, shitting on, you know, his other films and stuff. And now they're completely on board and they're really excited to watch this four hour film. And I thought it was just laughable that Warner Brothers tried to release another Godzilla vs. Kong trailer on the same day, which did not make a fucking dent with how insane the new trailer was turning all over social media and blowing up with how many times it was watched. And look, I also know that Zack Snyder told everyone that Warner Brothers has no interest in doing a sequel to this film, which is fucking lunacy. Are they out of their minds, especially after, you know, Wonder Woman 2, which was a letdown for so many people? And look, don't get me wrong. They were on a roll with the Wonder Woman film, which was actually really good, Aquaman I loved, and Shazam, but Birds of Prey was just <laughs> really disappointing, and uh, so was Wonder Woman 1984. And the only reason as to why I really got excited about it is because I haven't been to a movie theater in a very long time. That was my first time stepping foot inside of a movie theater, you know, uh, to watch a film. And it was just a really great moment for me. Yet, you know, when I came home and watched it on HBO Max, I was like, you know, this movie isn't really that great. So, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's like a film that I really can't watch again or enjoy. The only way to counter what Marvel Studios is doing, who are seriously up in their game, and the amount of support from fans who want the Snyderverse to continue, that is the only way to stay on track, is to continue the Snyderverse, because those solo films will make a dent of interest from this point on, okay? And mark my words, if they continue on this path of just doing the solo films, then the DCU will get buried by Marvel Studios if they don't reactivate the Snyderverse. Now that is not a prediction, that is a fucking spoiler. And look, I know I spent a lot of time trying to scrape the lower part of my jaw off the floor after watching that trailer. I was really impressed by it, and I haven't been this hyped since Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. So good job. And look, most importantly, Superman in a black suit is a must after he died and comes back. And I know the Warner Brothers execs were against Zack wanting to use that version of the suit, which goes to show the majority of times these studio heads don't know what the hell they're doing, could care less about what the fans want, and what could sell. And they also despise Zack Stark's approach to the Justice League film, which is why when Zack left, they hired Joss Whedon to redo the film, which they only used 10% of Zack's shots. And, you know, they made the film lighter toned, filled with jokes, and look at the end results. I mean, look, it wasn't a horrible film, but it was pretty bad. You know, I mean, it's watchable, but at the same time, it's like, eh, uh, really want Zack's version, you know, because it's just really bad, in a sense. And I 100% agree that I feel the same way about how Marvel Studios has done with Spider-Man, but at the fault of Sony Pictures who refuse to let them have full creative control of the characters, mainly because they own the rights, and they want to use those original characters with their films, and force the Marvel Studios to improvise with hybrid mixed characters, which is complete bullshit and has ruined Spider-Man for me in the MCU. 
However, as I've always pointed out, the Marvel apologists don't care about the major drastic changes to the original source material as long as Spider-Man is in the MCU. But just like the hypocrites that they have proven to be, they have major issues with the minor drastic changes, you know, from the original films while praising the major ones for the MCU version and making excuses for it. How lovely. And I get it. That there are a lot of Marvel and DC fans that want each other's favorite brands to fail. But look, truth be told, if one fails, so will the other. Whatever happens, each brand will cause a ripple effect and there will be no more friendly competition. And despite what you believe, these actors and directors are just as passionate as the fan base on creating these films, although I can't say much about the studios that want to enforce their political SJW diversity, virtual signaling, identity politics, and tokenizing characters, shoving that down your throats because it sells. Yet, you can profit even more if you just stop doing that and just focus more on delivering a good film rather than pissing off a loyal fan base that will buy the merchandise and watch these films on more than one occasion compared to the general audiences that will most likely just watch the film a few times and call it a day and not even have any interest in buying the merchandising. And look, the real enemy out there are the directors and actors who think the superhero sci-fi movie genre is a joke simply because those films bang at the box office and that is where the real money is being made. While their films are struggling to make that sort of impact at the box office because no one wants to see those films, honestly. And case in point, it's vital to support each brand. So until next time, on the same Spider time, same Spider channel, and same Spider place, Spidey Woman out. Thanks it, Tiger, you just hit the jackpot. Woo!